Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach who has lost and maintained a 140 pound weight loss. And today we are doing part one of a Q&A. I received so many questions, I'm actually going to break this up into two separate videos. I asked on my Instagram, in my Facebook group, and here on YouTube for your questions regarding weight loss, fitness, maintenance, life, anything, no holds barred that you had questions on. And like I said, I received so many responses that I'm going to break this up into two separate videos. So today I'm going to answer the questions that I received on YouTube and on Instagram. The majority of my questions were on my Facebook group. So that will actually be the second video. And I think for fun, we'll do a get ready with me while I answer those questions. So I'll do my makeup with you and I'll answer those questions in part two. So make sure you're subscribed and your bell's on so you don't miss it. But to Today, we're going to answer all of the questions from Instagram and on YouTube. Check out that description box down below for nutrition coaching. I do offer personalized to you macros and calories. This is how I lost and main, how I have lost and maintained my 140 pound weight loss, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching for questions, accountability, or to talk with me directly. Links and discounts to my favorite things and come join our Facebook group. It's free. It's supportive. We'll answer those questions from my Facebook group in part two. So come join us. We'd love to have you. So let's jump in to part one of this Q&A. Like I said, I'm going to answer all of the questions that I received on Instagram and also on YouTube. If you don't follow me on Instagram or you're not in my Facebook group, I'll put that here on the screen for you. Come join me. You can keep up with me a little bit more day to day. So, so the first question that I received on Instagram is how long is your average weightlifting session split routine or total body? So for my workouts, I have a pretty strict routine. I go to my local boot camp three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. This is a HIT training workout, high intensity interval training. And this workout is about an hour. This is where I get in my cardio and some strength training all in one workout. You know, I love my boot camp. It's been incredible for reshaping my body. It's made me me the best friends and the most amazing community. And I just really love it for accountability and consistency. And then I do utilize the Copilot fitness app. I love the Copilot app with every fiber of my soul. It is such an amazing fitness app. You actually are assigned to a coach who will give you nutrition and a workout specifically designed to you. And the workout in real time will correct your form. It'll walk you through your workout, show you the different moves that you, show you the different workouts that you're doing in real time. It's absolutely incredible. So I use Copilot Fitness two to three days per week. And then I have one to two rest days per week as well. My Copilot workouts are about 45 minutes from start to finish. And again, my boot camp workouts are about an hour. I will link the Copilot Fitness app for you. Download the app for free and have a free 14 day trial. Talk to a coach, get a workout, see what you think of the app. No obligation, but definitely recommend at least taking advantage of the free 14 days. I love Copilot and I love boot camp. So the next question is the correlation between perimenopause and weight loss. I am almost 49, so I am 100% in perimenopause. Whether you're in perimenopause, menopause, or postmenopause, weight loss is instantly more difficult. Why this is, is number one, the changes in your hormones and hormones can greatly, greatly affect weight loss. And number two, as we age, our metabolism naturally slows down. So every year that we get older, our metabolism gets slower and slower and slower. So those two things alone can really help prevent weight loss when we're in any type of menopause. The ways that you can combat the metabolism slowdown piece is number one, making sure that you're eating enough calories. That is how you boost and maintain a high level of metabolism and also doing strength training and building lean muscle. Lean muscle boosts your metabolism naturally and lean muscle burns fat and calories all day long. So we we can kind of combat some of those miserable pieces of going through menopause and weight gain by building lean muscle and making sure that we're eating enough calories every day. I've also done a couple of videos on menopause on my nutrition channel. If you aren't part of my nutrition channel, I'll link it down below for you. I do two videos a week 
all about nutrition. And like I said, I've done a video or two on menopause. I'll actually link those specific videos for you as well. But it's, but I will admit menopause sucks and weight gain is very, very common with menopause. You just have to try to combat it the best way that you can. Any travel plans for the summer? So if you know me, you know that I love to travel. Traveling is something I didn't like to do when I was over 300 pounds. It just wasn't comfortable. It wasn't comfortable on the plane. It wasn't comfortable while I was at the destination because I had to walk around so much and it was hard on my body but since losing my weight traveling has become one of my focus one of my goals every single year and last year I traveled a lot I've actually traveled quite a bit this year I do have a couple trips planned later in the year but to be honest with you I've taken a few months off of traveling because of Lola my dog sitting right back there on her dog bed. She was actually diagnosed with lymphoma cancer over a year ago, went through five months of chemo, went into remission, stayed in remission for 13 months, and about a month ago, unfortunately, went out of remission and her lymphoma cancer came back. So since then, we have put her into a second round of chemotherapy. She's doing amazing, by the way, in her chemo. We're not quite in remission. I'm, I'm hoping for this week or next that we'll get the diagnose, we'll get the confirmation that she's in remission. But because of that, I just am not comfortable traveling. And really, truly, to be completely honest, I just want to be with her as much as possible because I have my whole life to travel, but I don't have Lola for my whole life. So for me, it's important to just spend as much time with her as possible. So I kind of took a break from traveling during the spring and the summer. My next official trip was planned in September, and I did tentatively, tentatively plan to go to my 30-year high school reunion in July. It all depends on Lola. So as far as trips throughout the summer, I don't really have a lot planned, but what I want to do is take advantage of the amazing area in Arizona that I live in with doing hiking and day trips. And again, just spending as much time with her as possible because she's my number one priority and I wanna make sure that she's healthy and happy and makes it through chemo and that I get as much time as possible with her. She's also an older dog. She's about 11 and a half. So time is precious and time with her is always well spent. How do you manage your weekly calories, pre-plan, figure out each day, etc. So I do personalized macros and calories. I've done my own macros and calories. And with that, you get a calorie goal every single day. Now, I prefer to calorie cycle, which basically means that I don't eat the same calories every single day. I have a range of calories that I eat daily. And if I take that calorie number and times that by seven, I have an amount of weekly calories. So essentially, at the end of the week, I want to be in that calorie range and that is a deficit that is for weight loss. So what I typically do is I have one to two higher calorie days every week. This typically falls on the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or a couple of those days because that's when I typically go out to dinner or I have friend events or things that I do on the weekend that I allow myself to have a little bit higher calories and then I regulate my calories the rest of the week. So at the end of the week, I remain in a deficit. So there is some pre-planning that's involved in calories every single week, but I just try to make sure that I'm hitting at the end of the week, my calorie goal for the end of the week. And calorie cycling has really worked for me because it allows me to eat the things that I enjoy on the weekends and then be a little bit more mindful during the week. Can you share some practical tips for consistency, pre-planning, et cetera? So I kind of touched on that with the last question is kind of pre-planning your calories for the week. If you follow me on my main channel, I also meal prep every single week. I plan a breakfast, a lunch, and a snack, and I'm able to have those foods available to me for the week. Having my healthy meals ready to go is essential for me. I have meal prepped my entire weight loss journey. I've been very consistent with that. And it just allows me to not have to reach for unhealthy foods because I have healthy foods available at my fingertips. I also grocery shop every single week. So I plan a menu, I plan out my meals, and I plan out my meal prep. So just doing a little bit of pre-planning leads to consistency and consistency leads to results, including weight loss. So make sure that you are being consistent in whatever you're doing, whether it's fitness related, planning related, prepping related, that's really going to help you on your weight loss journey. Do you still enjoy the mud water drink? So a few months ago, I talked about mud water. Essentially what it is, is it's a coffee alternative. It's kind of like chai tea and coffee had a baby and it tastes like chai tea, but delivers the benefits of coffee without all of the caffeine. And the answer to your question is yes, I love mud, mud water. I consume it a couple of times a week. I've really been loving it iced as the weather has gotten warmer. I mean, we're already in the nineties here in Arizona 
bonus. So I've been making ice mud water. It has a lot of beneficial properties for your health. So I'll link mud water down below. If you haven't tried it, they have this starter pack where you get a frother. It's the most amazing frother. I love, love, love the frother. When I originally shared mud water, I fell in love with it and I use it daily to blend my drinks, including my mud water. But I would recommend trying it out. It's affordable and it's absolutely incredible, especially if you're not a coffee drinker and you want a healthy alternative. How do you deal with hunger? I'm in perimenopause and it's a killer. So I did talk a little bit about perimenopause, menopause when it comes to weight gain, but managing hunger can be really, really challenging. I myself am in perimenopause and I've noticed a few symptoms typically relating to sleep, but also relating to hunger. I find that I'm definitely more hungry in perimenopause and how I found to really combat that. Now this doesn't eliminate all of the hunger because it's just going to happen that extra hunger with perimenopause or menopause. But by me making sure that my meals and snacks include a good amount of protein and fiber, that has really, really helped me. And we know that protein and fiber curb hunger cravings in general, but I find this even more effective in really focusing on protein and fiber during perimenopause and menopause to help regulate those cravings. And I'll tell you, if I have a craving for something, I typically drink water to see if I'm confusing that craving with thirst, hunger with thirst. And if I'm still hungry, I will just indulge in my craving, but in moderation. But really, truly, I find that focusing on protein and fiber and drinking a glass of water, if I think that I'm hungry or craving something is really beneficial, Not not only in perimenopause and menopause, but just on your weight loss journey in general. How do you overcome an addiction to food? This is a really, really good question because I will tell you that if you have a weight issue or you've suffered with your weight your whole life, it's very likely that you have an addiction to food, whether that's a binge eating disorder, whether that's just an over, whether it's the restrict and eliminate and then overeat disorder. We, myself included, we all have an addiction to food. That's what leads us to being overweight and obese. You're never really going to overcome your addiction because we know that addiction is addiction. Think of an alcoholic. If they're addicted to alcohol, they have to stop drinking to overcome that addiction. Well, unfortunately, we can't stop eating. So we're always going to have an addiction to food. What we need to learn how to do is to navigate that addiction so that it doesn't take over and we continue to be overweight or obese, or we lose weight and then gain it all back again. I will tell you that the number one cause of addiction and overeating is going to be restricting or eliminating foods or food groups. Telling yourself that you can't have something makes you want it more. So if you can have a healthy balance relationship with food, eat all foods, stop calling foods bad or good, stop putting moral value on food, that's definitely going to help you overcome and regulate your addiction to food. I plan on doing a whole video on how I healed my relationship with food and I'll go into depth a little bit more, but make sure that you're not dieting, right? And you're not restricting or eliminating food or food groups. That's definitely going to help. What do you recommend for bloating and gut health? This is a great question. Your gut health has to be in check in order for you to be successful with weight loss. If your gut health is not where it needs to be, you're going to have a, you're going to have a really hard time losing weight and you're going to have a lot of bloating and distension and distress in your gut. So I highly recommend a probiotic. Every single person should be taking a probiotic every single day. I take the probiotic from Motivate daily. I've taken it for years. I absolutely love it. It's affordable and it's effective. I will link it down below for you. I do have a discount for Motivate, so I'll put all that information as well. And then for bloating regulation, making sure you're more regular, which also if you're not regular, that can lead to distension, bloating, and discomfort in the gut. You need to substitute with a fiber supplement. And if you know, you know. Just Better Fiber is my go-to. It's actually what was in my coffee this morning along with my collagen. Just Better Fiber is amazing. It is one ingredient, fiber. Be really mindful and leery of the fiber supplements at the store. They typically have a lot of fillers and things you shouldn't be putting in your body, and they're not going to be as effective is just better fiber, which is simply just fiber. So what I do is I put two tablespoons in with my coffee every day, stir it up, there's no taste, there's no texture, and it's going to give me fiber, which also helps keep me regulated and prevents bloating. So I'll link Just Better Fiber down below as well, but those two supplements are game changers for gut health. What remains your biggest challenge since losing weight and keeping it off? This is a good question. This is a really good question. Maintenance is hard, right? Maintenance is very different than losing weight. When we're losing weight, we're seeing our body change. We're seeing the inches go down. We're seeing the scale go down. We're able to get into smaller clothing. So we're always 
motivated when we're losing weight, but when we're in maintenance, none of that happens. The scale doesn't move. We're not noticing a lot of changes in our body unless we are building lean muscle and, and focusing on body recomposition. We're not seeing our ch size change really. So there's not as much motivation on a maintenance journey. So that's been one of the biggest challenges for me is not having that constant reinforcement of the scale changing and my body changing and sizing changing and just becoming smaller and smaller like during weight loss. So that's been a little bit of a challenge. What I've done to kind of combat that is I found something else to focus on. So for me, instead of focusing on weight loss, now I'm focused on fitness. So again, recomping my body, taking hikes, beating my best time doing 5Ks, moving my body and just growing in my fitness. That's really helped me with maintaining my weight because in order for me to see those results in fitness and muscle growth, I have to eat right. And again, you can't out exercise a bad diet anyway. So it's helping to keep my nutrition in check, but also helping keeping me motivated while in maintenance. So that's been a big struggle is just not having that constant motivation of the scale and changing in sizes and getting smaller and smaller that I've really had to find something else to focus on. And for me, that's been my fitness and that has really been beneficial. How do you not get into your head when eating more on special occasions? This again is a really, really good question. And this goes back to healing your relationship with food. Nobody gained weight. Nobody got fat because they went to a birthday party. Even if they ate half the cake at the birthday party, you're not going to gain weight and become obese and overweight by going to that birthday party. That is something that diet culture has drilled into our head our entire life. You can't eat this. You can't eat that. If you go out to dinner, you're going to gain weight. If you go to a party, you're going to gain weight. None of that is true. None of that is true. It is what you do 80% of the time that matters. And if you overindulge, then you just get back on track the next meal or the next day. You track it, you move on, you give yourself grace and you enjoy your life. Whatever you do to lose weight, you have to do that to maintain that weight loss. And there's all always going to be birthdays. There's always going to be dinner out. There's always going to be activities that involve food. You need to learn how to navigate those and not beat yourself up if you overindulge. It's 80-20. 80% you're on track eating the right foods, 20% you're enjoying your life. That's what's going to help get you out of your head when you do overindulge. And just get back on track the next meal or the next day. If you have not reached your daily protein goals but not feeling hungry, do you still eat? So the key factors in losing weight and keeping it off, number one is calories. You need to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight, but you need to be in a healthy calorie deficit so that your me metabolism stays moving and revved up and working while you're losing weight. And you also need to make sure you're eating enough protein every day to be satisfied and also maintain and build lean muscle. You should be building lean muscle. And if you're not, you need to be maintaining the lean muscle that you have so that you can keep the weight off long term and also so that you don't look skinny fat so that you look healthy with weight loss so in the event that you've hit your protein goal every day but you haven't hit your calorie goal and you're not hungry it's okay to go a little bit under your calories it's on not being more than 100 calories under your calorie goal and again this should be on occasion meaning maybe once or twice a month not daily not multiple times a week it is so important to eat your calories every single day. So in the event that you've hit your protein, but you're a little under your calories and you're not hungry, listen to your body. Don't eat just for the sake of eating, but also make sure that you're eating enough and that you're getting in your protein. When did you know WW wasn't right for you anymore and what made you realize this? This is an excellent, excellent question. So about a year ago-ish, I put out a video. I'll see if I can, I'll try to link the video. It was basically like an update video where I talked about how I was going to really focus on calories and protein to continue my weight loss and maintain my weight loss, and that I would be simply tracking my Weight Watcher points once per week when I film my what I eat in a day. That is still true to this day. I follow my personalized macros and calories. That is what has worked for me to lose and maintain my weight loss. And again, track my Weight Watcher points once a week. This has actually been quite a long process, actually over the course of a few years. I was always hungry on Weight Watchers. I was never satisfied. I would eat a meal and I wouldn't be hungry anymore, but I wouldn't be satisfied because I was eating food that was low in points, not necessarily food that I wanted, not necessarily food that had protein or fiber that kept me full and satisfied. So I was just always hungry and miserable on Weight Watchers. So I actually started looking into the number of calories that I was eating. And I found in 2021, being over 300 pounds, that I was eating 12 or 1300 calories a day on Weight Watchers. I was not a weight loss and nutrition coach at this point, but I was smart enough to know that at my weight, that was not enough calories for me. So I started researching the importance of eating enough calories, which then led me down the path of eating enough protein. So at the beginning of 2022, I decided to shift my focus from Weight Watchers to 
counting my calories and eating enough protein. I didn't care about carbs and fats. I focused on calories and protein. I upped my calories from 1,300 to 18 to 1,900 every day, and I lost 90 pounds that year. And from that point, I knew that in order for me to maintain and lose the rest of my weight in a healthy way, that I needed to eat more calories and eat more protein, and I've never looked back. And I have said time and time again that my only regret is not doing this sooner, is to stepping away from, is to not stepping away from weight watchers and making sure I'm eating more to lose weight, including eating enough protein. It has literally changed my life and it has been completely sustainable and maintainable for me. Like I said, it's been a year long process, but I really pushed for calories and protein the beginning of 2022. So those were all of the questions on Instagram. Let me move over to the community tab here on YouTube. And it looks like we have about 16 questions. I'm going to try to go through these quickly because this is going to be a long video. Hence why it's in part in two parts. There may also be some duplicate questions. So the first one is, I think you should touch base on how disciplined you are because that is extremely rare. It's my personality, not gonna lie. I am very much type A. My entire life, I have been somebody that when I set my mind to something, I just do it and I don't let anything stand in my way. Mom, if you're watching, comment down below and verify this because my mom used to tell me this growing up. It's just part of who I am. It's ingrained in my personality. It's the core of who I am. When I set my mind to something, I remain disciplined. Even if I'm not seeing results, I still keep going because consistency leads to results. I am disciplined. I was disciplined through my weight loss. I'm disciplined in my maintenance. I'm very, very consistent and disciplined in my fitness. I make it a priority for me and I don't let anything stand in my way. I don't make any excuses. I remain disciplined and I'm telling you, if you can overcome that, if you can be consistent and disciplined, it's literally going to change the game for you. How and why is it so easy to gain five to seven pounds on an indulgent week's vacation, yet it takes up to a month to lose that same five to seven pounds? So first of all, you didn't gain five to seven pounds of fat on a vacation. That's not even possible. You had a weight fluctuation based on the foods that you ate on vacation, but you didn't actually gain five to seven pounds of fat. Typically, the majority of that weight gain will come off rather quickly within a week or so of returning back to normal eating. Now that's if you're going back to normal eating, if you're eating in a caloric deficit, but you also have to remember that it's much easier to gain weight than it is to lose weight. We can gain a pound in a week and it can take us three weeks to take that pound off. That is just how our body works. Gaining weight is easy. Losing weight is hard, but what you have to do is remain consistent in whatever you're doing. Make sure you're in a calorie deficit. Make sure you're eating a lot of protein and fiber. Make sure you're drinking your water to flush out any of that weight fluctuation and to really help rid that weight gain. But it's just very, very common and part of our body structure to gain weight quickly, but be a lot harder to lose it. I promise you, you will lose it if you stay consistent. Did you gradually increase your protein or did you just go all in with the amount in your macro calculation? Girl, I went all in. I figured out, like I said, in 20. 21 that I wasn't eating enough calories or protein. I did my macros. I became a weight loss and nutrition coach and I went all in on my protein. Now, as I have lost weight and gotten into maintenance, I've increased my protein. I've increased my calories. As my fitness has evolved and changed, I've increased my protein. I just went all in because protein is essential for weight loss. It's the number one macronutrient for weight loss, keeps you full and satisfied, and it maintains and builds lean muscle. If you want to gradually increase, you can do that, but I say go all in. Just jump off the dock. Just just jump right into the water and go in and reach that protein goal every single day. My budget isn't really able to stretch out for all the protein powders and shakes. Any help with ideas would be appreciated. So you don't have to consume protein shakes and protein powders to lose weight or to get in your protein. You can get in all of your protein from real food. You just have to choose the right foods. Focus on dairy. Dairy has a lot of protein and dairy is really affordable. Any type of meat is going to give you a big pack of protein. And there's even grains out there that have protein in them. Things like quinoa or protein pasta. You don't have to utilize supplements if it's not in your budget. You can simply get your protein in from real food. What are your largest barriers to weight loss maintenance? Mine is money. I can't deny that I'm not able to afford to take group fitness classes or buy a lot of protein at the grocery store. So you don't have to pay to work out. There are tons of free workouts on YouTube. Like I mentioned, Copilot, you can take advantage of 14 free days of utilizing Copilot workouts. A lot of group fitness classes are free, 
especially if you live in a community like I do where there's a gym in your community, our group fitness classes are free. And really truly, I don't want this to come off the wrong way, but going out to lunch or dinner one time will pay for a group fitness class or will pay for a fitness app like Copilot or will pay for some protein powder. You have to make the choice to make yourself a priority and then instead of going out to eat, utilizing that same amount of your budget for protein powders or group fitness classes. And like I said, you don't have to have protein powders and protein shakes to lose weight, but it is beneficial to help you get in your protein. It's really about where you choose to place your money and where you choose to place your budget. And really truly it should be on reaching your weight loss goals because going to the doctor and being overweight is more expensive than protein powder and exercise classes. How do you strengthen each part of your body safely? Core, abs, arms, helpful hints for beginners. And as we get older, how many sets and reps? So this is going to vary for every single person. Similar to your calories and your protein and your carbs and fats, every body is different. So every body is going to be different when it comes to exercise. The best way to tone up and to strengthen is to do strength training. Again, I recommend Copilot down, take advantage of the 14 free days. Your coach will set you up with a workout tailored to you. Whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced, they'll give you reps, the amount of weights you're supposed to use. Take advantage of Copilot to get yourself set up with workouts. You can also, again, on YouTube, look for beginner workouts, but I can't give you a number of reps or amount of weights that you need to lift or how long you need to do the workouts or what workouts because it's tailored specifically to you. That is where Copilot really changes the game, especially as a, someone who's beginning a workout routine. What about loose skin during weight loss? Does it ever firm up? No. Loose skin is not going to firm up. Loose skin is going to always be there unless you have it surgically removed. However, you can fill in some of your loose skin with lean muscle. So for me, I carried the majority of my weight in my back. I did have skin removal surgery in May, so it's almost been a year ago. I had a back lift and extended breast lift and implants so that I could get rid of all of the loose skin on my back. I have a lot of loose skin still. My stomach, my thighs, I have a lot of loose skin. The only thing you can do is fill it in with lean muscle. So for my arms, for example, because I have quite a bit of lean muscle in my arms, I was able to fill in some of my loose skin with muscle. Now, I still have loose skin, but you you are able to fill it in a little bit with lean muscle, but unfortunately, the only way to get rid of loose skin is to have skin removal surgery. However, I would rather have tons of loose skin than weigh 140 pounds more. So don't let loose skin deter you from losing weight. Can you talk about the mentality of losing weight, the doubt and the frustration, and how we should be talking to ourselves or hyping ourselves up? I've lost 100 pounds and then got pregnant and went, it went to hell, lol. Can't find my can't get this mode back. So all you can do is can stay consistent, even when the scale isn't your friend, even when you're not seeing the results that you know that you deserve, stay consistent because the scale will always catch up. I promise you, scientifically, the scale will catch up. And the only way to stay motivated, and I say this all the time, and really truly the only way to stay motivated is to see results. And the only way to get results is to stay consistent. So whatever you're doing, fitness, weight loss, maintenance, stay consistent so that you can see results, which will keep you motivated. You just have to restart. You have to make a commitment to yourself to restart, whatever that looks like. And maybe it's baby steps. Maybe instead of focusing on drinking your water, losing weight, moving your body, maybe you pick one. And maybe that's nutrition because guess what? Weight loss starts in the kitchen, fitness starts in the gym, and the only way to lose weight is to get your nutrition in check. So maybe you start with baby step number one of nutrition, and then once you get that in check, you start adding in the water and the exercise. Just start over. I know it's hard and I know it's really hard to regroup and restart, but make that commitment to yourself and do it. Hi Jen, I love your channel. Do you have any more surgeries planned and what are your thoughts on Botox and fillers? So my friend Amy and I just recently did a Q&A about cosmetic surgery. I will link that video for you. We talked all about whether or not we would have any additional surgeries. The short answer to that for me is no. And I go into detail again in that video, so I'll link it. And listen, Botox and fillers, you do you. I am not opposed to Botox and fillers. I am 48 years old soon to be 49. I have never had Botox and I've never had fillers, but let me tell you, if I needed it, I would do it. I am lucky that my skin with all my weight loss and my age has bounced back pretty good. I actually am very, very much into skincare. I have a very regimented skincare routine, which has helped with skin elasticity and not necessarily needing Botox. And I also put collagen in my coffee every day from collagen for her. That has really helped with skin elasticity, hair, skin, nails. So I fortunately haven't needed Botox, but listen, I'm not opposed to it. And if you want to do it, do it.
Do you have any ideas for aspartame free options to stay on track? Many of the channels I watch make recipes with things that have aspartame and I'm allergic. Love your channel and motivation. So aspartame isn't the only sugar alternative out there. There's a lot of other options. Lakanto is a great sugar alternative. It's monk fruit with erythritol. And I will tell you that I've really gotten into a new alternative and you'll see me shift over to this in my videos and that's allulose. So allulose is a little bit newer to the market, but it's naturally derived from figs and raisins. So out of all the sugar substitutes alternatives, allulose is the most natural. And I will tell you, it tastes just like regular sugar. I'm finishing up my Lakanto products and then I'm switching over to allulose. I bought mine on Amazon. I'll link it for you, but find an alternative other than aspartame. There are so many out there. Stevia, Splenda, allulose, Lakanto, erythritol, monk fruit, there's so many. There's a lot of options that don't involve aspartame. What do you think of Whole30? So anything like Whole30, keto, all of these cleanses, these detox, none of these are sustainable. You can do Whole30 and lose weight, but as soon as you stop doing Whole30 or any other diet out there, you're going to gain the weight back. So I think the premise of Whole30 is great. It's focusing on whole real food. However, you're eliminating and restricting foods and food groups, which isn't sustainable. If you want to follow a Whole30 approach, just focus on whole real food. Eat a balanced diet. Make sure that the majority of what you're eating is whole food and very little processed food. This is going to be much more sustainable long term than Whole30 or any other diet out there. I personally would never do any of these things because like I said, they're not sustainable. And the last question is, I hurt my back last week and at this week's weigh-in, I was up three pounds, even though I continued to eat on plan all week. Could this possibly be because of inflammation from the injury? Okay. I want everybody to listen. And for those in the back of the room, you did not gain three pounds of fat. Just like you didn't gain five or seven pounds of fat on vacation. You had a weight fluctuation and it is very, very, very likely that it stems from inflammation. The scale measures mass. It doesn't know what the mass is made up of. So if you're retaining fluid, if you're inflamed, if you ate more salt than you normally do, if you ate more carbs than you normally do, if you work out, all of those things are going to lead to the scale moving up. It doesn't mean you gained weight. It's simply a weight fluctuation. And I can guarantee you, if you ate in a calorie deficit, you didn't gain three pounds. It is scientifically impossible. And I want to repeat this as well. It's impossible to gain weight in a calorie deficit. It's impossible. Now, will you have weight fluctuations? Yes, but you don't gain weight if you're in a calorie deficit. Calorie deficit leads to weight loss. So keep that in mind. And again, don't live and die by the scale. And especially if you had a surgery or you're taking medication that causes water retention or inflammation, it's very likely that that spike on the scale is simply from that. And it will go away just like the vacation spike. Do not utilize the scale as your only tool or measurement. Please, please, please. If you take anything from my videos, it's focus on your body, focus on your measurements, taking pictures, how your clothes fit, muscle definition, not the scale because the scale measures mass and mass only. So that is part one of this Q and A. I'm very invested in the things that I share on my channel. So I'm really glad that I could answer your questions and help you navigate your weight loss journey a little bit better. And like I said, there will be a part two to this video. I'm actually going to film that in a get ready with me style. We'll do our makeup together and I'll answer all of the questions I received in my Facebook group. So definitely subscribe and turn your bell on so you don't miss that video or any of my other videos. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you have any additional questions for me, leave them down in the comments. I'll try to answer those in the part two video. I will link everything I shared with you today. I also have a discount for collagen for her, which is the collagen that I use. I'll put everything in the description box as well as nutrition coaching and come join my Facebook group. Follow me on Instagram. We'd love to have you. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.